So I'm Ziad. I'm Clover. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about Generation Z and the future of tomorrow and what your consumers look like. So who is Generation Z anyway? You might be thinking, who's this young person? How did he get, get up on stage? And what is he on about? <laughs> Generation Z, or as some Germans like to call it, Generation Z, right, are those born after 1996 till those born after around 2010. That makes your oldest Generation Z around 23 or 24, entering the workforce for the first time, developing a lot of their main consumer habits that will last a lifetime. Your younger generation Z is around nine or 10 years old. And if I know anything about generational trends, it's that middle school girls set the trends of every time. They knew Justin Bieber was hot before the rest of us and musically and whatever else. And so this cohort is the trend setting generation right now. We are 32% of the world's population, making us the largest generation in the entire world. We control $143 billion in spending power, influence over, influencing over $600 billion. Those of you who are parents don't need me to remind you that your kids influence your spending. Our average attention span is eight seconds, but what that really means is that in a time, in a period where we have so much choice and access to information, you have eight seconds to grab our attention. So as we're thinking about marketing, whether it be about cars or whether it be about consumer products right, uh, and personal care products, you have eight seconds because we have that much choice and we're fundamentally changing the way that we talk about products and marketing and purpose. So how are we different than the millennials? A question we get a lot and a question that I spend a lot of time consulting on. Generation Z could not be more different than millennials. And I want to start there. We are social media natives. Millennials grew up in a world where things turned on and off. Generation Z were growing up in a world where we never had to reconnect with anyone. You know, when my mom had friends, you know, when she was growing up, if they moved away, that was goodbye forever, right? When we have friends, we can be continuously connected to every single person we've ever met since we exited the womb. <laughs> that fundamentally changes the way that we look at the world. Millennials will post cringy selfies of them at lunch, right? Being like reconnecting with old friends, we would never. That's not how we roll, right? Social media, how we're thinking about it is a first language. We're using it to cultivate community, as we just discussed. We're using it to think about the world differently. And we're performing and we're creating and we're using it as a professional tool. And subsequently, the world looks very different. We think in terms of we because we're connected to thousands of people online and we feel intimately connected to their realities. And millennials fought a lot of battles for us. They said, we are the I generation and we can do whatever we want to do. And we're saying, yeah, I can be whoever I want to be, but I want to be it together. We're creating community and we're saying we have power in many of us. Millennials wanted a seat at the table. We're saying if the table wasn't built for us, we don't want it. We're gonna flip the damn table or build our own. And that translates to our politic. Millennials, right, Gen Y, their generation Y, millennials is the nickname. Our nickname is the plurals. We're thought to be the first generation that thinks in terms of we. Because when I go to the polls, you better believe that I go to the polls. I'm not just thinking about the people who live on my street. I'm thinking about the thousands of people I'm connected to. I'm thinking about you all. And I'm thinking about how my vote impacts this global reality. Because someone suffering millions of miles away isn't so far to me. I see it. I live it. I can't escape it. And so we're claiming more of us as us. And that doesn't mean we're not living in times characterized by us versus them narratives. We are, and it's scary. But in whatever us versus them paradigm exists, we're claiming more of us as us, and we're saying we have power in the many. And we're claiming that unapologetically. So who am I? To answer that question, um, I am Ziad Ahmed. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Juve Consulting. I'm 20 years old. I'm a full-time student at Yale University. Um, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about the power of young people. What Juve Consulting is, is we are a Generation Z marketing consultancy and clients come to us to better understand how to reach young people and we help them do that. Right, I'm 20 years old, I'm on the older end of my company. Uh, we, everyone on our team is ages 14 to 23 at every level of the company. We learn in first grade that a primary source is the best source, but somehow in the marketing world so often we forget that. And we claim that we can assume things about cohorts. We can't. 
If you want to co-create products and campaigns and ideas that resonate with Gen Z, Gen Z needs to be in those conversations, and so that's what we do. This was born out of me starting a nonprofit when I was in eighth grade and finding myself in rooms at the White House with industry leaders in rooms like this that I didn't even know existed. And being the youngest person in the room and people asking me questions and realizing the need for this. And so that's what we do and we champion the power of young people because if you want to stay relevant today, whether it's about cars or whatever you might be working on to change mobility and transport, we are the movers and shakers of tomorrow and today. I'm going to steal this off you. Thank you. Um, so who are we as consumers? Um, fundamentally, we're known as the woke generation, right? The brands we invest in, how we decide to show up is an expression of our value systems, what we believe in, what we stand for. For us, our key values are around authenticity, identity, right? It's about seeing transparency in these big companies. If we look at the fact that 70% of Gen Zers say it's important to defend causes related to identity, this is intrinsically different from the boomers, right? Our parents. For them, values were much broader. We look at world peace, stopping world hunger, protecting the planet. But for us, this is very much a sense of identity. It's very personal and it's very nuanced. And we want to see the diversity of that nuance shown in the companies that we're supporting and the companies that we're affiliating ourselves with. We want to buy from brands that are ethical, right? I get to work with Juve with a lot of different young people from as early as the age of 12 through to the age of 24. And this generation is so good at calling out companies on their BS, especially in regards to greenwashing, right? We see directly through claiming good practice. And we don't just want to see inclusivity in the billboards and the palette of different faces. We want to see it in the way that you generate value in society. We want to see it in your business models. We want to see how you're creating seats at the table. And of course, we prefer to buy gender neutral, right? And this is again a reflection of the d diversity of that spectrum that we're looking for. Now, Ziad and I were both born in 1999, and what that means is that we have grown up in increasingly tumultuous, disrupted, seemingly complex times. You know, our lives are kind of flag posted by these terrible moments in society that have defined us on a societal level, but also very personally, from 9-11 through to the 2008 global financial crash to the 2016 election. And what this means is that, you know, challenges like climate change have shifted from the periphery of our collective consciousness to taking front and center stage, right? And with that changing narrative, we've realized that climate change itself isn't the problem. It's the symptom of broken systems. It's the shoes on my feet, the clothes on my back, the light bulbs I install, it's the car that I drive, and it's who we elect into power and why we elect them there, right? So we're looking at a fundamental transformation of our society, and that's actually quite an exciting opportunity for brands, because they're able to pioneer this change in values, right? If we look at disruption, Gen Z is not afraid of challenging the status quo. They're not afraid of disrupting the norms, right? We're going out there and we're using our voices. On March 15th, 1.4 million young people took to the streets in protest of global climate inaction. Yet on March 16th, 1.4 million young people were left asking, what now? And often in the wake of protest comes powerlessness when demands aren't met by those in perceived positions of power. And so we're looking for stability. We're looking for new leaders. And business is stepping up to this opportunity. It has no choice but to step up to this opportunity. And this is reflected in the way that we're communicating, right? Movements are starting with memes. They're shifting from the underground to the mainstream. And of course, this affects what we're buying. We want sustainability. We want ethics. You know, and we want that to show up in every part of our lives. So when we talk about this, what I hear from a lot of brands and what I hear from a lot of companies that I work with and clients is, okay, but well, you're asking for two things that are diametrically opposed. 
You're asking for the easy and convenient, but you're also asking for the hard and organic and meaningful. And how can we have both of these things at once? And what I'm here to tell you is you've got to do it, right? There isn't a choice. We do want these juxtaposed needs, and it is possible to do both. And we have to engineer and innovate to get us there, because that is the future and that is the wave. We want things that are convenient, but we also want things that are empowering and compelling, right? And we want things that make the world better because we've looked at a world, as Clover discussed, that is bleak, so we need better. And that's what Gen Z is, right? Counterculture is in our blood. We exist to defy expectations. We're saying that me as an American Muslim, me as a person right now, me as 20 years old as a student, whatever I might be, I'm not going to accept whatever society tells me I should be. I'm going to be who I want to be. We exist to defy expectations and to say, I'm going to do what moves me. And so we're doing that. And we're asking hard questions. And when we don't like the answers, we're rewriting them. And so the major takeaway really is this notion that without talking to us, how can you market to us? If you want to create the mobility and transport and innovation of tomorrow, where are the young voices around your tables building those conversations? If you want to move into tomorrow, into tomorrow with purpose, to understand the nuance of sustainability, Clover has been a climate activist since she was 11 years old. Where is Clover at your table? If we're talking about sustainability, Malati, right, our friend, you know, is the reason why Bali no longer uses plastic bags. Where is she at your table? Young people are doing things not tomorrow, this fallacy that young people are the leaders of tomorrow needs to be disrupted. We are indeed the leaders of today. And so you need to talk to us today. So that's us. Uh, feel free to connect with us on socials. I see y'all taking pictures. Tag us, connect with us. We'd love to keep the conversation going. We're talkers first. Thank, thank y'all so much for your time.